Hey guys, thanks for asking me to come in today to talk about one of my favorite subjects, space. But I tell you, every time I talk about space, I have problems because learning about space, there's three things that make learning about space in our universe so difficult. And, uh, but we still should try to learn about it. Uh, number one, things in space are really, really big. They're so big that you can't even think how big they are. I mean, I'm going to show you some examples, but it's still going to be difficult. So things are big. Number two, things in space are really far away. Now, I love science fiction movies, and people say, shoom, shoom, hyperspeed. You know, they get places in their ships. That's science fiction. I love science fiction. So things are really big, things are really far apart, and things are really old. So let me let's just start by things are big. <laughs> so usually you see pictures. I will tell you, any picture you've ever seen of the sun and the planets together is a lie. I'm sorry it is anytime you see it on a TV or movie or picture or a book it's a lie even this right here is a lie um, it's just not correct for two reasons scale you know scale is I know you know scale I know uh, remember when you used to play with your uh, your uh, Barbie doll and it was like this big no your Barbie doll was this big and your teddy bear was this big the scale was wrong right uh, so Scale has to do with when you shrink things or make them bigger. So I say this is wrong because this is not the right scale for size. If the sun is this big, these planets are not this big. If the sun was this big, you would have to use a microscope to see the planets because they'd be so small. But how can I, I just have to bring this in and go, hey kids, you can't see it, but all the planets are right here. <laughs> Too small to see, do you understand what I mean? The second reason why this is not correct is that if the planets are this size, they're not this close to each other. But I can't bring in a model of the solar system where Pluto is 30 meters away. You know, it's like it would be gigantic. You understand what I'm saying? That is the solar system, things are way too big. Let me give you another example. Uh, let's say I wanted to get the correct size of the sun. I'll need your help. Thanks for volunteering. It takes courage to volunteer. Come here. So this is a sun on fire. It's my old version. Here, here hold this right here. And let's open it up. And uh, open it up one more time. And go on this side over here. This is a sun with the corona. The corona is all the part. So if the sun was this large, our sun, our star, our solar system, see that earth right there? Right here, that's how big the Earth is next to the sun. Things are really big. But I tell you, our star, which is called Sol, that's where they get the name solar system, is a baby. Some stars are as big as this entire school compared to Sol. My head explodes when I think about how big things are. Anyway, the sun is a giant ball of hydrogen. Thank you, put that over there giant ball of hydrogen, and the Earth is this small compared to it. So things are really, really big. Uh, what about the, uh, uh, I'll need uh, uh, another volunteer. And uh, thanks for volunteering, it takes courage to volunteer. Get up here. <laughs> so let's say, let's have a model we have about size and how distance. Let's see, this is going to be the Earth, okay? All right, and so uh, we could put, you, could, you could be, a. Uh, you could be the earth, okay? <laughs> and uh, this is going to be the moon. Now, if you see, I made these the same size. Is the earth and the moon the same size? No. no. But it's cooler to see it this way. In fact, we've landed on the moon six times. The Russians have landed robots, and the Chinese have landed robots, but we have landed on the moon six times and brought back rocks. Don't smile, it's better, okay? I like it was very serious. Thanks, sir. So, here is an example of the earth and the moon, okay? And they're about this size compared to each other. All right, you wanna be the earth or the moon? I'll be earth. You'll be the earth, okay, take the earth. And there's a string we're gonna unwind here. Um, hold it up. Is this how far the moon is to the earth? What no. do you think? No. no. Closer? No. no. Farther. Farther? Farther. Farther? How about this? Now the moon goes around the earth and the earth rotates 
and the earth goes around the sun. Is this how far it is from it? No. Yes or no? What do you think? No. A little bit further, maybe? Yeah. Let's undo that string, okay? The moon is actually about 12 circumferences away. There you go. I got it. Undo it. So I'll just keep going. Maybe we can get this in the camera. You go that way. Keep going. Unwind it. Is this how far the moon is from the uh, earth? No. no. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going, keep going, keep going. Can you get him in there? Keep going. How about here? You might have to even back up. No, go that way a little bit. All right. And look, 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 look. Stop right there. That's how far. This is the correct scale. This is how far the moon is. Two hundred thirty-six thousand miles from the Earth, and it's going around. And it took the astronauts three days to get there on the Apollo space program. That's pretty cool. Now right about here, see this knot right here? That, if you're that close, the Earth's gravity is still pulling you back because it's big. But when you get right about here, now the moon's gravity starts pulling you in towards it. So I'm gonna pull the, uh, I'm gonna pull the Earth's gravity back. So there's a lot to learn about the solar system and thank you, you did a great job. You can stop being the earth. <laughs> but things are really big and really far apart. And uh, they're, they're kind of fun, but they, uh, I guess I'll tell you one more thing. Gravity, we'll talk more about this later. Gravity holds everything together. As the planets rotate around, it's gravity that holds them in that orbit. Now, are those orbits perfectly circle? No. No. Anybody know what it's called, the orbits? They're, uh, yes, what do you think? They're, it, they're, it's a math word. They're like an oval. Yeah, what do you think? Uh, they're ellipses. Ellipses, which sounds like eclipses. So, I am the sun, and things would go in a straight line, according to Isaac Newton, but what's holding this red planet in an eclipse. What's making it going on an eclipse? Anybody? Gravity. The gravity of what? Discernment. And if we had no gravity, this is what would happen. What do you predict would happen? It would stop. Go. Would it stop? It would, yes. would it keep going? No. no, it would stop. It would do, yes, what do you think? I think it would drift out into space. It would drift out, but not in a circular motion more like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, viewers. I almost crashed into you. Without the sun, the giant sun holds everything together. That's why it's called, called the solar system. And I wrote on this planet, right, on the sun right here, that the sun is 99.9% .9 of all the matter in the solar system. If you add up the mass of all these planets, it's just like a drop compared to the sun. So things are big, things are far away, and things are old. In fact, the sun, even though we feel its heat every day, it's so far away, 92 million miles, that if we could magically or scientifically turn off the sun, the sun would still, light would still be traveling. It would take seven minutes before it got dark. And light travels really fast. Like, I don't know, here's my flashlight. Uh, come here, you can, uh, we're gonna race, all right? Um, you're, you're gonna race, come over here. You're gonna run from here to that table. On the count of three, we'll see who's faster. Light or my friend here. One, two, three, go. Too late. <laughs> I kind of set you up. Light, light travels 186,000 miles a second. So even though the sun's big and light's going fast, it's pretty far away. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Let's say if you got in a school bus and you tried to drive to the sun, well, you can't do it anyway, right? Because it's pretty far. Uh, there's oxygen and it'd get hot and you'd be gravity pull you in. But if you could drive that distance going 55 miles an hour, it would take you something like 18 years to drive there day and night. It's a long way away. So that's a little bit of talk about the size of the solar system, the age of the solar system, and how big things are. Now I'll tell you one more thing. It's probably going to ex explode your brain. When you go out tonight and look at a star, those stars are so far away that the light from those stars 
has taken millions of years to get to your eyes, which means that star may not be there right now. Our closest star, Alpha Centauri, is two sets of stars. They're like two and a half light years away. That means you'd have to be in a spaceship that could go that fast for two and a half years just to get there. So it's big, it's old, and things are far away.